<laughs> All right, hello and welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, thanks for joining us and please do subscribe. Uh, we are taking a little ski trip up in the uh, Tesla. We've been using the Rivian quite a lot lately, but uh, today it's just me and the three and a half year old getting it some uh, runs out on the uh, up mountain greens. Uh, but it is a absolutely frigid freezing day. So we're gonna test out efficiency um, and just kind of share a couple of cold weather tips and tricks for making the most out of your drive in an EV. Uh, and I'm also gonna see if I can get an experiment with the heat pump going uh, too, because I've seen a lot lately about uh, how important heat pumps are in cars. And we've got one here in the Model Y, we don't in our Rivian, we didn't in our Model 3 before. So let's see if we can notice any difference here. All right, well, uh, oh, I've also got our GoPro Enduro battery in here now. I just picked those up because we were having a lot of issues uh, on cold days like this, especially skiing with the GoPro batteries, just like not wanting to work. So let's see if uh, this helps us at all either. All right, so come along with me and let's drive. Let's ride. All right, it's me here and our little one heading up for a nice uh, ski trip. We're also testing out our Halo Station uh, GoPro mount here, which seems to be working pretty well. You have to let me know if this seems a little bit I more stable. In the comments. All right, well, it is a freezing day. It's uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that's what, negative uh, five, is that right? Are we going the right way? 32, uh, yeah, something like that, negative, or, yeah, whatever, uh, pretty cool. <laughs> and um, we, uh, let's see, so um, our cars sit in the garage overnight, so it's not quite as cold as being outside, but it can still definitely get pretty frosty in there. So one thing that we always try to do when we've got a trip like this is um, make sure that not only is the car charged, but that we've got a scheduled precondition uh, set. So in the Tesla, you can do that in the car or in the app. Rivian recently just added that in their latest, uh, I think it was January software update. And I've noticed that that, um, in the Rivian especially, makes a huge difference. The Tesla actually has a heat pump in it, which um, is a bit more of like an efficient way to get heat uh, down into the batteries. So essentially- Daddy, um, that's a Tesla also. Uh-huh. So essentially it can um, move the heat around uh, uh, kind of throughout like the different parts of the car. Whereas in the Rivian, it does not have a heat pump. Um, and our older Tesla didn't have one either. I think they added it in like 2000, actually I'm not exactly sure people would yell at me if I get it wrong, but uh, it was a few years ago in the Teslas. Um, the, uh, but, but all Teslas now have uh, heat pumps. And then the rumor is that Rivian's gonna be adding, one, uh, adding them in uh, the R1s, it's so about the S and the T in a uh, kind of like, uh, refresh this year, um, which should help with efficiency. Then notice the Rivian is, um, I mean, efficiency overall in the Rivian is not great. It's basically just a, a big brick on wheels and you get range because the battery is so huge, but um, efficiency is not awesome. It, I'm usually getting like under two miles per uh, uh, per watt hour, and no, per kilowatt hour. Uh, whereas like here in the Tesla, they, it goes the other way. So it's hard to tell, but uh, let's see. Here we're getting, 311 watt hours per mile, so that is, yeah, it's like a, um, more like three, a little bit up more. So, um, the uh, you know, it's not only about just like the heat pump or not, but um, kind of the aerodynamics of the car and the weight and everything, too. Uh, so that has a big effect here. Um, but basically, the benefit is, um, you know, in the Rivian, without having a heat pump, it has to essentially produce heat through. Um, either the climate control or um, I believe it actually will use the motors uh, like in a somewhat inefficient way to produce heat, uh, like waste heat basically. And um, then that can be used to warm up the batteries. So basically the reason you need to do all of this is that uh, uh, batteries don't like the cold. They're way less efficient. Um, you get uh, less, um, less energy uh, out of them. And um, if you're charging, it also takes longer to uh, put energy into them when they are uh, quite cold. So you wanna keep them sort of in an optimal range, which is like uh, basically, well, the Rivian always tries to target, I think 72 degrees. So, um, you know, somewhere kind of like in warmish, but not hot uh, range. So in the Rivian, a lot of the time, uh, like when you're kind of starting off and it's cold, it'll uh, produce heat to warm it up. And then after you've charged, the battery will be pretty hot from the charging. Um, if you're dump especially like DC fast charging, you're dumping a ton of uh, current into it and creating heat through resistance. And then it actually will try to cool it down when you're driving to get it back into that optimal range. So anyway, um, we'll see here, uh, you know, what, what the effect is uh, of this cold in the Tesla. 
We are at, oh, it's getting a little bit warmer now with the sun. It's uh, 22 degrees, but usually the temperature sensor that has this is a little bit higher than it actually is, unless you in the sun. So I would say it's probably about 20 right now. All right, well, we're going to go um, take our drive up to Mountain Creek, which is our uh, local ski area where we've got season passes. And uh, let's see how we do efficiency-wise. We should have no issue with the range or anything like that. Um, it's only 40 miles for us to get there and then 40 back. And we are charged up to like 70% when we left. All right, let's go. So one of the really nice things uh, when it's just the two of us skiing is we can actually just fit the skis here through the pass-through in the back of the Model Y. Uh, which is quite nice. So the big reason we actually got the Model Y uh, in the first place was having this pass-through here <laughs> where you can put one seat down. I mean, we don't even need the seat down, but just put the, the middle part down and keep the other two up. Um, when I have the twins especially, uh, it's nice to be able to have two seats up for them and then just the pass-through uh, part open there with the skis sticking through. Okay. Nope, they're in the back. So we don't even need to use the roof racks uh, today, which will help with wind noise and uh, efficiency too. So one thing I noticed like immediately coming back into the Tesla after I've been driving the, Riv driving the Rivian around uh, a lot more is um, autopilot like is just I'm not loving it these days. Um, the uh, like it, it is nice that you can use it on any road. Uh, it doesn't just have to be a pre-mapped one like in the Rivian, but uh, highway assist in the Rivian is just um, in my eyes a lot uh, more seamless and like usable and uh, driver friendly. This um, ever since they uh, did the update uh, you know, for the um, safety recalls, basically. Um, just like constantly nagging you now. So part of the problem is that Tesla doesn't have any sort of sensors in the wheel other than a torque sensor. So if you're not like actively turning the wheel or um, pushing against the direction that the car is trying to turn it, it doesn't know that your hands are on the wheel. So it will, um, you know, keep flashing like the warning and telling you to put uh, your hands on and like doing the BP thing, which is quite annoying. Um, and the Rivian, you just like leave your hands on. You don't have to like have it, um, you know, be putting like any torque or pressure into it. You just have it resting uh, on the wheel, and it knows that your hand is there through the capacitive sensors, which I think is much nicer. And it basically like never uh, yells at you. Um, Highway Assist also, since it is using pre-mapped roads, knows about the um, like lane merging and highways dividing and things like that. And it'll like pop up a little warning there to, to let you know uh, places you need to. Be extra cautious and like see now like apply slight turning force the steering wheel. Like, okay, I am. Um, yeah, so like it'll it'll give you those little notifications and stuff, which is nice. And then um, the best part about it is when you change lanes, which you know is a very regular occurrence here in New Jersey on these roads. Um, you don't have to like turn the system off and re-engage it. In autopilot, every time I switch lanes, I have to put the turn signal on. Uh, then like put uh, torque into the wheel to basically disengage autopilot. Then it's off entirely. And when I go to the other lane, I have to then you know, do the double uh, clicky stock thing again to put it back on, which uh, it just, you know, it's, it's not like it's that bad, but it uh, adds up over time and it gets a little bit annoying. With uh, the, the Rivian one, you uh, indicate a turn signal, uh, you indicate with your turn signal, it uh, allows you then to like just make the lane change yourself. And as soon as you're you know kind of centered in the other lane, it'll uh, re-engage and uh, you know, it's back on. So like you don't have to constantly be turning it back on and off and everything much better, less like tiring. All right, we're here and we're parked at the furthest away parking lot I think I've ever found, so this should be interesting. Uh, but here we go, here's our efficiency. You can see when we got stuck in traffic at the end there. Uh, but 320 watt hours per mile on average. Not too horrible, but you can definitely see the effect of uh, being cold here. All right, we had a really fun time skiing. Can't tell somebody uh, with really I mean, my lids back there had an absolute blast. Um, we're heading back now and uh, wanted to see how the uh, basically like cold soak that we did, we're just sitting there in the cold uh, while the battery cooled down uh, and not plugged in or anything, uh, has now affected our efficiency. So we'll take a look at that as we're getting back home. Um, and then I also did a little bit more uh, looking into essentially like why Rivian did not do a heat pump in the R1s. And basically it comes down to the same reasons that Tesla originally didn't do it, um, just kind of a cost first benefits uh, like trade-off. So basically having a heat pump would help, uh, but maybe a little bit more marginally, especially in such a large vehicle and one that um, is already able to produce as much heat as it can uh, through resistive heating means. So basically because the Rivian is uh, large, uh, apparently like the larger the vehicle, uh, the 
um, like less impact that a heat pump would have, uh, and also like the more able it is able to produce like its own heat, so it um, doesn't really need that much. Uh, and then also on the R1s, especially since it came out first with the quad motor, and they're basically just able to uh, produce heat through the motors, that helped a lot too. And then even though they could have put a heat pump in, they just decided not to in the first place because it would add more complexity, be like additional parts that uh, could potentially be failure points, require maintenance, um, and just add to the cost of manufacturing, the cost of the vehicle itself, and then the cost over time. So probably for all of those reasons, like and this is all just um, uh, kind of um, guessing why. Uh, I don't have any like insider knowledge or anything. Uh, but those are most likely the reasons that they didn't. But uh, a lot of EVs now are moving to heat pumps, and so the uh, it, it, in all likelihood it is uh, most likely that they will add heat pumps in the future. So the Wired article that I recently saw about heat pumps basically said that all EVs should have them, and if uh, your EV doesn't, then it's already a dinosaur. And I kind of get where they're coming from. I think it's probably pretty important, especially in smaller cars. Um, but uh, I'm really not that worried about not having it in the Rivian. Obviously, it wasn't enough of a reason for us to not get it. it wasn't enough of a reason for us to not get our original Teslas. Uh, you know, I'll look for it in what's going forward. Uh, but I really don't think it's something we need to be worried about um, not having or like making a buying decision off of. So uh, I wouldn't stress out too much about it. You're not going to have a huge hit to efficiency or anything like that. Now, another reason that I read uh, that Rivian may not have heat pumps is that um, heat pumps are not quite as efficient in extreme temperatures, so like in extreme heat or cold. Um, although, at least what I've read about them in uh, usage in other cars, like in extreme conditions, like in Scandinavia and stuff, um, as well as in houses, uh, is that they uh, actually do work quite well even at like super low temperatures. Um, but I don't know. Um, but uh, because of that, supposedly, especially since Rivian is you know marketed as a, an adventure vehicle and meant to be able to get yeah out and about in extreme uh, temperatures. Uh, whether it's like driving through the desert or uh, driving up the snowy mountains and stuff, um, they wanted to make sure that uh, it could be as efficient as possible there. So a heat pump may not help with that. So I don't know. You have to let me know what you think. Does it sound like legitimate reasons or is it really more just excuses uh, since it's early development? All right, well, we're pulling back home now and wow, look at this. This is quite interesting. So our average efficiency on this drive is 245 watt hours per mile. Uh, so that is, wait, that's actually way less than before. We were at 320 before. So that's, uh, that's quite good. Interesting. I'm not sure what to make of that. I guess the being that cold did not hurt efficiency very much, uh, because, uh, we got better after being cold. Huh, who knows? All right, we are back now. So thanks for coming along with me, uh, on that drive. I hope you learned something interesting about heat pumps. I know I did today, and there's still a lot more to learn about so many of these uh, new technologies that are becoming more and more important with EVs. Um, so definitely a lot more for me to learn, and uh, as I do, I'll share it with you as well. So let me know what I missed, uh, what uh, is also relevant here. Let me know your thoughts below as well. Are you comfortable getting an EV uh, without a heat pump going forward? All right, well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you out there on the road.